This is Greg Troutline with Maritime Reporter TV, and we're joined today by Sylvain Julien, the Director of Naval Architecture at BMT, to discuss the evolution of ferry design. Sylvain, uh, a BMT design ferry, the Enetai, uh, was recently built and delivered to Kitsap Transit. To start us off, can you give us an overview of the vessel and the project with insights on what you believe make this vessel and this series unique? Okay, thanks, Greg. Um, so as a general introduction, Enata is the first of two 140 feet uh, high-speed catamarans. Uh, they are built by uh, Nichols Brothers on the West Coast and to a BMT design. Um, so the, uh, the sister vessel, Commander, is due to be launched uh, later this year and, and it's done to exactly the same spec. So the vessel has a capacity of 255 passengers on a single deck uh, and with a dedicated bike storage for 26 bikes. Um, it, it is designed with a characteristic round four deck shape common to many larger ferries operating in the area uh, to ensure good interface uh, with the existing infrastructure. As we said, it's designed uh, around a twin shaft propulsion system. So it's an MT4000 engine uh, and Rolls Royce now comes with water jets. Um, so the design also includes an active ride control system by NIAD, um, and which provides very good uh, ride um, comfort uh, at high speed in the rough seas um, that it's coming across. Um, the vessel is also equipped with a, a SER system, one for each engine, to allow compliance with uh, EPA tier 4 requirements. Uh, this system represents uh, uh, in volume about the same size as, as the engine uh, with a weight of about five tons. So for a high-speed craft, this is a huge design driver. To put that into context, this, this weight um, equates to about 70 passengers or, or a third of the total passenger capacity of the vessel. So a significant amount of time and work has been done to ensure good integration of the system for maintenance aspect, but also to limit the added weight impact on, on performance and fuel consumption. So the result of that work is a, a 38 knot vessel as a cruising speed in normal service condition is 35 knots. In fact, the design of performs the contract requirement and this is the result of uh, um, a couple of things. First, BMT and uh, Nichols embarked on a, on a very strict weight control process to ensure that uh, weight, uh, weight targets were met. So from equipment selection to, to review of small structural details, every aspect of the design was reviewed to offer a coherent and, and, and lightweight solution. So this high level of care um, had taken to meet the weight budget and allowed BMT to, to conveniently develop its latest uh, iteration of a series of hull forms that has been designed specifically to address the additional weight uh, and added space uh, required for the SCR system. Um, and, and all of that while delivering low wash characteristics and, and of course high level of comfort. Sylvain, you know, this, this is a transcendent time across all maritime sectors with digitalization, decarbonization and autonomy coming to the fore. That's my opinion and I'd like yours. Um, when you look at the markets that you serve, um, what do you see as the leading uh, drivers for the design and construction of ferries in the coming decade? Yeah, definitely. There are many technological developments that are currently changing the way new vessels are, are designed, but also produced and, and operated. Um, each market within the maritime industry are developing answers that best suit their needs. Um, so if we start with uh, digitization uh, and perhaps the notion of digital twin, it is clear that there is a trend to collect more and more data on board vessel and try to leverage these data to offer insights uh, in the vessel operation and maintenance. Uh, as a vessel designer, BMT sits at the very start of this process and, and typically generate as part of the details production design a, a single 3D engineering model of the vessel that includes vessel structure, mechanical systems, and, and, and where needed outfit to support the production process. These informations can be used throughout the design approval process and, and remain available to support the vessels through its life. So the need to then feed such a model with data collected on board will vary enormously depending on the sector of the industry. Um, if such process um, uh, do make sense in the defense and, and, and perhaps commercial shipping sector, it, it may not be that beneficial in the context of a, a high speed passenger craft such as the Enatai. Ultimately, what an operator what an operator needs uh, is the tools to support a strong maintenance plan and, and I guess the tools to ensure that the vessel is used at its best performance. 
if the former is generally well established and, and often provided by the main propulsion equipment suppliers, so the latter tends to be overlooked. Uh, and as a first step towards digitization, um, this will certainly be my first choice. If we looked at uh, uh, other um, uh, topics or, or trendy topics uh, such as autonomy, uh, well, this is certainly a, a fascinating subject. There are a lot of expectations around this technology. Uh, but the reality of its application means that um, full autonomy in the short term is only really likely to develop in, in niche application. And I'm talking here about small survey or, or surveillance craft. Such application out of the, the main shipping lane are, are easier to develop without the need for, for, for constant remote control. In the next few years, uh, our perception is that to try and avoid the issue of ship shore um, interface uh, and perhaps safety in busy shipping lane, um, it's likely that the technology will first develop by offering intermediate level of autonomy, uh, where the technology is used as a way to reduce money. Uh, it also brings its uh, level of controversy, of course. Uh, in the longer term, we see that uh, river transportation and then perhaps short sea shipping uh, are the main sector of the industry where autonomy will be able to develop and, and mature. T typically, these routes are shorter and avoid, uh, to some extent, the issues associated with uh, vessel reliability. There is much to discuss in the matter of decarbonization with alternative fuels, batteries, and hybrid solutions. Uh, what do you consider to be the reality on the street? And with that, I mean, how fast, how far are operators, operators moving to reduce their emissions? And what do you see as the main tools or the techniques to get it done? Okay. Yeah, decarbonization is a, is a very trendy topic, um, both in, in the US and globally. Um, so if decarbonization is, uh, is the end goal and, and, and generally reducing um, emission is the path to meet that goal, I think it's, it's important to remember that the correct foundation is and, and will always be to use the right vessel design for the internal operation. Put simply, the best way to reduce emissions still remains to reduce the energy requirements in the first place. And I guess this whole process should, of course, uh, be used to define the vessel requirements as well. Um, you know, reducing speeds are, are all uh, parameters that allow to, to reduce um, carbon emission. Um, uh, an efficient hull form and gene generally uh, uh, an efficient design is key to leverage the technologies you have mentioned, especially as you are uh, trying to apply them to power angry applications such as, such as a high speed um, uh, ferry. New technologies such as a hybrid system, batteries, or alternative fuel all come with string attached, such as higher capital cost or less flexible operating profile. Um, it is therefore important to select the option amongst many that, that offers the right benefits to a given application or route. Um, over the years, BMT has designed uh, LNG vessel and, and had done uh, hybrid craft. And in each case, it was very important to consider the cost benefits of this option. A simple example to mitigate the increase of capital cost, you may look at LNG bunkering that is cheaper than gas oil or a well-designed hybrid system that can save you money in terms of maintenance. Ultimately, and especially in this challenging time, an operator needs to ensure when considering new technologies that it actually makes sense for their business. Um, and and yeah, we are certainly happy to help with that process. Sylvain, we very much appreciate your time. I just have one more question. I'm sure that uh, investment in research and development at BMT is ongoing. Can you discuss uh, what you're looking at today for tomorrow or discuss a couple projects that you think best illustrate uh, the direction that you're heading? Yes, yes, of course. Um, we've got quite a lot of um, um, inter interesting projects going on. Um, as we work on many different vessel types uh, and different markets beyond ferries, such as uh, wind farm support vessel, uh, crew boat for the oil and gas, patrol boat, fireboats, and so on, uh, we have an ongoing thread of work aimed at leveraging development across markets uh, and applied to, to new applications. Uh, beyond that, we have a specific project aimed at uh, addressing uh, emerging market requirements, uh, and I can give you a couple of uh, examples. So uh, as we talked about in uh, autonomy, one good example is a, a newly released uh, stabilized monohull concept. This takes the form of a, a new pantalon design specifically developed for, for very long range application. 
beyond the long range uh, requirements, we also worked on the many uh, other aspects associated with uh, an autonomous vessel, such as uh, system reliability and, and the often overlooked optimization potential that, that goes with uh, the absence of, of crew, of course. Um, another example may be uh, the outcome uh, of some work we did a couple of years ago um, on, on the mini SOV design, um, which is based on the, on the Summit Swarts platform. So the vessel is, is um, will offer both an increased transfer capability in the uh, wind farm market compared to typical crew transfer vessel, but it also offers a significantly lower cost space for accommodation and transfer of. Uh, of wind farm technicians compared to a traditional monohull uh, SOE. Um, as the first vessel is now in operation in the, in the rough seas of uh, the Taiwan Strait. Um, yeah, I guess that's a, a good couple of examples of, uh, of what we do. Okay, well, again, I truly do appreciate your insight and I look forward to talking to you again in the future. Thank you very much, Greg. Cheers.